Okay, I'm going to make a recording on how to build a demo um, using the ICR, Intelligent Character Recognition, Handprint Recognition. I've got a form here. I just went and found one online, uh, filled it out, and uh, uh, scanned it, and I'm going to get this data off of this form. I'm going to use both um, the Nuance ICR within DataCap, Nuance, and I'm also going to use um, Periscript as well, so use both of those. The ICR is really easy to set up. Periscript takes some custom rules, and we'll go through both of those. First things first, got to start our application. I always start with FastDoc Admin. It's a really good starting point. It leads to a nice, clean application. Makes it easy to set up your doc classes. Um, doesn't go all the way, though. Um, has some issues around that. Just open up any application. It forces you to log in if you want to open up a new application. And then I've got this button here that's the wizard, and I could choose that to start a new application. Can ask me questions. Uh, the questions are pretty simple. I just choose a new application here, RS. Um, I'm not doing CMS. I'm not going to copy an application. Pretty much creating a template is copying an application. It's another matter. It's not an old application. Um, I just give it a name here. I'm going to call it uh, ICR test HSA doc. Uh, I'll do financial docs. Um, I might do another one in a minute. Um, now you can change your doc classes and stuff here. I don't recommend it. Um, I used to put them up here. Do not change document or page ever. Don't change those page types. Create your own and leave those alone. There's some inheritance going on. You want to leave those alone. I just say finished because I'm not going to do anything else in this. It says, uh, do you want to connect? And it pops up. They say, yes, I want to open it when it's done. Um, but it's going to pop up a window over you that shows where it copied that. And it's called Financial Docs is the application. Um, now I'm going to go open that application. Here it is. It's the last one here. I'm going to log in as admin. Uh, this is datacap 9. Dot 01 fix pack 2. So um, it works the same in uh, 9 1, which just came out recently. I'll be using that in the next week. So I go to this icon here. The first one is kind of a it's a client where you can do scanning and testing. The second one here is your uh, batch structure. We can edit that. And the third one is your workflows, your jobs, and things like that. First thing first in the batch structure, I'm going to choose the batch and I'm going to create a new document called HSA funding. And I'm going to enable inheritance from document. Remember, I said you don't change those. I'm going to say yes to add that. I'm going to say um, add a page here called HSA funding. Now, this is a single page, so I'm only going to have a main page. I'm going to enable um, inheritance from page. Um, I would have a, a main and a trailing if it were multiple pages. So typically, you put all of your fields on the main page, and then your trailing pages um, just come along for the ride. If there's data on them. Um, you can get it off in many different ways. You can create um, specific instances of them, but it's typically we put all the fields on the main page. I'm going to say there's a minimum of one page, there's a maximum of one page, and the order is this is the first page. Um, it, it is, you could start with zero, but I like to start with one just to be really clear on which page number it actually is. Um, from there, oh, I got to create some fields. So I'm going to add a field and I'm going to create one called name. There's no inheritance on these. I'm going to create one called account number. You can put spaces in the, in the names, but sometimes when you get to script, if you ever have to do any, which is not too often, um, you're going to run into trouble. So don't use spaces and names. Um, I'm going to add one more field. What did my document look like? Called OSSN, oh, and I'll just do um, I'll do street, city, state, and zip. Add field. Um, that's in. Street. Address. And city state. Okay, so I've got a bunch of fields here. And the next thing is to enable um, the reading of this document for, I'm going to change our rule sets here. I'm going to enable the OCR, which I go to um, recognize pages and fields. I'm going to say read the page, load the zones for the fields, which we're going to create a fingerprint for this in just a second. And I'm going to read the machine print on the on the page um, just to get that data. I actually don't have to read the machine print because this is all ICR. So I'm going to turn that off. When you do ICR, you connect it to, you have it read at a specific zone, whereas when you're doing 
OCR, you tell it to read, read all the machine print and then you tell the fields to, to populate themselves. So on machine print, I would just say, add what, what, whatever was recognized in that OCR to the field. In hand, hand print, I'm gonna choose read the hand print in the zone. And I have to do that for each of the fields. Now, go through the year and do street address and city, state, and zip. Now, uh, I've got that all set up. The next thing is I have to create a fingerprint. So if I look at page ID, if you look at identify pages, and I put it on the batch here, the way it's going to do it is with fingerprinting. This is already enabled. There's many different ways of doing this, but in this case, we'll use fingerprinting because it's probably a form-based document. It's definitely the best way to go. Um, we've got all kinds of different ways to recognize pages, and we've used different ones of these in different cases. But that's what I'm going to use. But I have to create a fingerprint. The biggest issue is this is a PDF, and we can't create fingerprints with PDFs. You have to use a TIFF. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm run one quick batch through and then choose the batch folder uh, to get that TIFF. So I'm going to put the into multi-format here in this multi-format directory, which will read PDFs. And I'm going to go over to my client here. And I, a lot of times I'll switch over to Data Cap Studio at this time, at this point, and do it. But I'm going to try it. Try this. This isn't common for me. Um, mostly I'd switch to Data Cap Studio at this time. Um, I'll do vScan, uh, vScan multi-format. And there's the reason why I don't use uh, FastDoc. There's multi-format. should say import all. And I should be able to say vScan. And dip them all through. So I'm not going to use FastDoc. I'm going to go, um, well, I could do this also. I could do this with the desktop client as well. Let's try to see what that does. So I'll log into DataCap desktop, desktop and I'll choose my application here, which is Financial Docs. I'll say vScan, vScan multi format. And it's going to read in that one PDF. You'll see it over here. It's going to crack it into a TIFF. That's uh, kind of what's going on. It takes a little bit longer. It takes a couple, you know, second or two per page. And there it is. It created that TIFF. I'm going to say OK. I'm tough to stop. So I'll run another batch through. And now I've got a directory there that's going to have um, that TIFF file. So when I go to back to creating my fingerprints, and I'm going to create a new class. Um, I'll create this called HSA class, and I'll add that. Um, now I've got a class. Or a fingerprint just to organize them. If I start getting a lot of them, you want them organized. And then I'm going to add a fingerprint and ask me to go find a TIFF file. And I'll go back over to my application, which was called uh, Financial Docs Batches. And here's that batch. Um, it's it's uh, February 24th, so 22400. That's the batch number. Uh, and there's that TIFF file. So we'll read that in. It's actually going to do a, um, a image um, cleanup on this as well. So, and one of the things we've got to do, I did, I do remember looking at this before. I've run this once through before. Um, you can see that the um, the image processing was a little overzealous to cut the lines and things like that. So, I'm going to um, I'm going to save this fingerprint, but we've got to go change that so it doesn't get too much of the line. The fingerprint will still work, but the way you, the way you say you identify a fingerprint and say the page type is going to be type HSA funding made. Now, if it recognizes this by the light in the dark areas, really it's fine. You know, where all the text is on it, doing some analysis on locations of things on the page. Um, now I've got it, it'll identify it as that page type based on the light and dark areas. And then you have to tell it where the zones are, where is the actual text. And I'll choose these texts like this. So um, you can see all the lines were removed as well, which is nice. And there's the account number. And there is the um, social security number, street address. is here, choose that, and city, state, and zip. So um, there it is. I should probably have the amount too. So let's go add the amount. Uh, fingerprints get saved automatically, but if I come back over here and I say um, add a field called amount, and I'll add that, come back to the fingerprint, choose my HSA funding one, click on amount, and now I can put the um, location of the amount here as well. So there is that. Um, I can save this now and I could run it through and get the, the data off. So it's automatically going to do that. Oh, amount didn't have that set to read. Um, we had that later. Remember, we had to tell it to read the field and read the handprint in the zone. And I'll save that. Now we've got a batch that's going to be identified and I could run that through. I like to do it through DataCap Studio um, and I'll show you some tricks um, to using that as well. 
So I launched DataCap Studio, log into my same application, Financial Docs, the one we're creating. And once that's loaded, I can go into the test tab and choose, you know, usually I would right click on this, say new batch, and then choose vScan multi-format. And then I would choose play, but I've already got a batch here. We started in that other system and it's just on pending mode and I can pick it. And now that's the one I'm running. It shows the documents here, the, the current documents in the batch. Oh, we didn't change the, um, that's what I forgot to do. We didn't change the image cleanup, the image enhancement. And all those UI rule sets that were in FastDoc, we can get at here in settings, okay? I have to choose which document type it's on. Other is where this runs. This image enhancement happens on doc type other. It happens at the time at, during just before page ID. In the And I've got to open an image file and I'll go find that same file and see data cap, financial docs, batches, zero tip. There that is. And it's going to load it. I can make this full screen. Zoom in with your mouse wheel. And um, you can see on the left here is the original image. On the right here is what happens. Now, what happens is remove lines needs a higher minimum for this because 50 isn't enough. And I think I'm going to try 70. Oh, I did 79. Oops, I hit a key, so it closed. Remove lines, 70. And now when I do that, you see that it maintains the, the, the K and the Y and the 1, things like that. So the minimum length was too short. I can simply say save and close. And now I've got that image enhancement. So now I'll be able to understand those, those, those pieces of text. So sometimes you have to do that, a little minor tweaking on the image enhancement. I'll go back to my test tab. I've already picked this. Um, the next task that I want to run is called page ID and I'll click um, play. Now it's gone through that really quickly. I can see that it's recognized this as an H and a document. If it didn't, I could click, click, click keep running and say advance or say keep running and run it and go change my rules or change my fingerprints and try to figure out, come back and run it again. It'll say, are you sure? And this is where I, you spend a lot of time doing that. We'll do that in the next step. Um, I'm going to say advance. It goes to the next step profiler. This is one where we're going to run it over and over again if we have any issues whatsoever in recognizing this document. And so one thing is that DataCap Studio doesn't do route. Well, it'll do the routing. What will happen is this document will get routed to verify, and you won't be able to keep running it over and over. So you have to turn off that routing just temporarily while you're while you're working on it. And there's this routing rule set called split batch, and this split batch rule is the one I turn off. Um, if I say lock rule set, and I just say um, disable this rule, so you can see now it's highlighted. It won't run that rule now. No batches will go to verify at all. And you'll find, like, when you get done with all the build, you'll run one through and, like, oh, went straight to export. Oh, I forgot to turn that back on. If you want every batch to go to verify or you want to create some rule, some percentage of them, then you have to modify this rule and say, um, if I want every one of them to go, I just make sure this is set to yes, not just if the DCO status is one. So if I want every one of them to go, I'll disable that rule right there. But in this case, it's good. I had just not going to send it to um, verify. I publish this rule set, make sure that all of them are, are unlocked and, and ready to go. If any of these are locked, what will happen is you'll notice that your, your batches start running really slow because behind the scenes, it's having to lock and unlock those rule sets over and over again. So it's a good sign if your batches are something like, oh, why is it going so slow? Um, that might be one. Profiler here, click play. It'll run through. And this is where I'm going to say keep running so I can look at that batch. And here is the data that it got off. Now, this will work in any any um, client, but I've gotten um, Kelly. Now, she's got a, a Kelly case, got a Kelly L less than Smith, so it's got some issues. We could run some validations on that. It came up pretty good as HS289. Um, one, two, three, so it's got, I got that right. Uh, got social security number right. So these are pretty, these are nice ones that I hand printed and things like that. Now, Periscript is the next one that we're going to change. So at that point, we've got it all dialed in for ICR. There's some other pieces that you might need. I'm going to put this batch on hold right here. We'll actually, we'll probably just remove it. Um, there's another piece that you might need, and it's on this ICR tab. When I choose 
these individual fields. I block this and choose um, this HSA funding and I choose, let's just say social security number. Um, there's things that I can do to improve the recognition on this on this ICR tab. Now you're giving some some instructions to the to the ICR engine. In this case, number account number. Uh, well, one thing is I can say the character set here for social security number is zero one two three four five minus oops one two three four five six seven eight nine and then a minus. So it's a hyphen. So and social security numbers just have those characters. You're helping the OCR engine understand that. You can give it dictionaries, things like that. Um, you could say the font is unknown, but in this case, I know that these are all handprint. So I can choose handprint. And, and again, I'm just giving a hint to the um, OCR, or sorry, the ICR engine of what it is. One thing that's important here is length. So on length, um, what's really better to do on an ICR it's un unstructured text is really hard for these things to read. I wrote it really nicely, so you're going to get pretty good results, but most people just scrawl. And when you scrawl, you have to do one of two things. You have to put boxes there, which look like, like this, where I've got um, you know, a set number of boxes. And when I know that there's 10 characters there, I come over and I tell it that in the length, it's 10 characters. That will greatly increase your... Um, recognition along with saying that it's all letters or it's all numbers or things like that that will greatly increase your recognition um, this is an actual font that comes with datacap it's in the support directory under fonts and these are the different fonts and they do that that uh, character boxing the nice thing about this type of character box is way better than doing lines because um, all you have to do to get rid of these is despeckle. And when you do despeckle, all these drop away. You're not doing line removal, which can, you know, this one, is it part of the line? Is it part of the box? That kind of stuff. This despeckle is a way better um, way of going. So it's a good, good way to design your forms is with a um, better font. So the next step in this would be to um, tie it to Periscript.